Hey, I'm Pascal from Orange Pixel and I just completed my first Kickstarter. It was a success, 170% funded. In this video, I know it's a long video, but I want to cover all the stuff. Uh, why the Kickstarter, why this amount, uh, what went well, what went wrong. Did I learn anything and um, would I do it again? Let's just dive in. Alright, so first question is pretty obvious. Why even do a Kickstarter at all? And um, the answer to that is, at the beginning of the year, I decided to create small scope games. And I did that with Snake Ore, and then I started on Residual. And Residual isn't really a small scope game, so um, but it had potential. I noticed from all the replies and all the feedback on my GIFs and videos of the early stage of this game, it had a certain charm and people got more interested in it than in any of my previous games. So um, after a couple of months working on it, I pretty much had uh, two options. Drop the game because it was getting too big and out of control and start something new or something smaller that we could release before the end of the year. Or to continue working on the game, which was just a very high risk because working on a game, it costs money. Pretty much, it's my day job, so every day I spend on the game is a day that needs to be earned back with that game. So um, that's really why I started the Kickstarter. I needed to know if there was enough there, if there was an audience there, if I could actually get some of it funded and continue working on the game and make it bigger and better. And um, I'm glad to say that I could because the Kickstarter was a success. The second question is also a pretty obvious one. Why uh, 7,200 euros? And I think it's eight thousand dollars not sure i'm gonna talk about euros from now on it's based on other kickstarters i saw um, especially the one from cascadia games i've known him for many years we make the same type of games we have the same type of audience and his kickstarter was just completing when i started my kickstarter and he managed to reach his goal which was i think a little bit higher than my goal um but i compared that kickstarter and then um, pretty much did some calculation on let's say average backer does about 20 euros let's say we get about 360 backers compared again to other kickstarters that did the same thing um, i ended up with this amount and it would also cover uh, three to four months of work for me on this game which is pretty much until the end of 2020. obviously i hope to get more than that 100 percent goal and we did we managed to get 170 percent every extra euro helps most of this is just operational cost as orange pixel this all this kickstarter money goes into the orange pixel account and then every month i take out some money to pay our bills of course i'm also having other revenue still coming in from games i already released and all the sales and discounts happening on those things so all that combined is pretty much um, my income for the rest of the year and it allows me to not worry about money and just focus on the game and make it as big as possible and that's the whole point of this kickstarter as for setting up the kickstarter i stuck to two important things uh, on the reward side i didn't do any physical rewards like uh, t-shirts or mugs or pins badges whatever um, Pretty much doing physical rewards costs money. You'll have to create those things. You'll have to ship them everywhere. All right, so an example, um, if this mug is part of the backer rewards, let's say for 50 euro, you get a mug. I have to create this mug, which is probably 10, 15 euros. I then have to ship it to wherever you are in the world, which is another maybe 10, 15 euros. So your 50 euro suddenly is worth only 20 euro. For that money, I'd rather have you back me at 20 euro and not have any physical rewards. The most important thing for me was creating the game, not being some merchandise guy and sending out stuff everywhere. It would also cost a lot of time. I think I would have doubled the Kickstarter goal if I was shipping all that stuff out there. So that's why I didn't go for physical rewards. It allowed me to set a lower goal on the Kickstarter and it also saves me a lot of time. I also didn't set any stretch goals. Um, people ask me about it, but if I come up with a great feature, I'm gonna add it to the game and I don't care if we meet a certain extra stretch goal, a great feature should be added to the game. Um, I could also come up with just awesome features that I might have thought were awesome, but then if I start implementing them, they don't really work or they're not really good or they kind of destroy the whole gameplay. And then I had to implement it into the game because it was a stretch goal. So I just can't suddenly say we're not going to add it. I don't stretch goals for games. I don't really think they're a good idea. 
right. Um, things that sort of failed. Pretty much the Kickstarter itself, um, or at least the planning stage. I was just um, continuously thinking, uh, should I do a Kickstarter? Should I not do a Kickstarter? And back and forth, back and forth on that idea. I really launched the Kickstarter within like a week. Set up the page, typed everything, did a little video, did all the backer rewards, come up with all that stuff. And next time when I do a Kickstarter, I'll make sure to uh, decide on it right now and then have at least one month or maybe two to prepare everything. I think that works a lot better. Don't just do it like that. Um, take some time to prepare everything. And another thing that failed was my Kickstarter video. Um, it was a good video. It showed the game, it showed some gameplay. But come on, I'm doing these YouTube videos every week. I have camera experience. It's not like I'm afraid of this camera and talking to you. I could have done a much better job at the video. I actually did a better job at the video um, a week into the Kickstarter and that video did a lot better. And Let's face it, on these weekly videos, I sometimes go above and beyond on special effects and explosions and blowing up the office and everything. I could have taken more time and do a much better Kickstarter video. I think that would have impressed more people at the start. And next time, we're gonna do it in a much better way. So as a tip to other developers, um, if you're camera shy and not used to the camera, don't do it. It looks terrible. Just look at my early YouTube videos, getting into this whole thing it took me a while. It looks terribly crappy, awkward, and don't do it. Uh, a very good gameplay trailer will probably do a better job. But if you can, and if you're used to talking to a camera, do that. It's, it's much better, more personal, and um, it adds more flair to the whole thing. Final thing I did wrong on my Kickstarter page is um, I didn't add all the stuff I already did. Well, I did mention it at the bottom somewhere. Orange Pixel released this many games in 16 years. But um, as some backers told me, why are you not showing all the games? They didn't really know it was me until they noticed that I made Gunslug, Stardash, Heroes of Loot, Space Guns. Some of those games just ring a bell at a lot of players and um, I should have mentioned them from the start at the top of the page and I eventually did in the second week I think of the Kickstarter. I added this banner with showing the screenshots of some of the games and some of the names and all the things I made. Um, it just builds confidence, showing people that I'm not a new game developer. I have released a lot of stuff and there's no reason this game is not gonna be released at some point. So back me. And um, I should have done that from the start. And again, if I do another Kickstarter, I will add those things again. And I will also mention this game, obviously. So um, add your experience if there is any, because it's very important, not just talking about your game or your project, but who are you? If you have a lot of experience, you should tell people about it. Equally important talking about the bad stuff is of course talking about the good stuff. So what worked for me? Um, just to set the scene, I'm one guy, uh, one game developer doing everything myself. I don't have a team. Uh, it was a lot of work, but I'll get back to that in a bit. Um, my main drive was on Twitter. I uh, posted three times a day, sometimes four times a day. Um, my morning, my end of the afternoon and my midnight, which covers most of the time zones, I think. Um, I posted a bunch of GIFs, videos here and there and try to come up with interesting little Twitter sentences and of course hashtags. Uh, things like uh, indie dev, also gaming community, gamer, gamers, streamers. There's a bunch of hashtags and I just mixed and matched all of them over the course of 30 days. My second best drive was uh, Instagram, I think. I did stories and pictures of it, but also these YouTube videos every week. I noticed after talking about it in my video on Thursday that we had a little bump in backers. So uh, these videos also helped and Pretty much all your social media, wherever you are, use it. It's it's important, especially if you're just one person, but if you're a team, if you have a graphic artist, musician or whatever, let them all post about it and spice things up and make sure you have enough content coming in. Um, I did various new GIFs and videos every few days so that I could mix things. And of course, you can you reuse stuff because even after uh, maybe 20 or 24 days into the campaign, I still had uh, people that I know that are my regular contacts and I've been following them for years. They've been following me for years and for them it was the first time they noticed this Kickstarter. After more than 20 days of me talking about it three or four times a day. It's, uh, that's how Twitter works. That's how social media works. Not everything you post will be seen by everybody. Another thing I did was um, 
email Kickstarter. Uh, they have an email address, game with Kickstarter, and uh, I mailed them, asked them if there was any possibility to feature it somewhere, somehow. And um, if you don't ask for that, you're not gonna get it. I asked for it and I got it. Not sure if those two are related. It could have just been by accident, but I got a feature and I think it was because I mailed and asked about it. There's actually a great video from Anya from Kickstarter. Um, I'll link it in the description below. It gives out some tips and tricks and hints and things on how a Kickstarter works and how it goes and what to do and what not to do. And she actually mentioned you should have contact with them, mail them. Even before you start your Kickstarter, you could actually uh, contact them and see if they have some tips, tricks, things like that. So um, check the video on that in the description below. Another thing I did that um, I'm not sure if it worked actually, uh, but almost every Kickstarter does it is cross promoting with other Kickstarter. So um, post one or two updates a week. I did two on Tuesday one and on Friday the other. Um, and I mentioned other Kickstarters. I contacted them, asked if they want to do some cross promotion and uh, most of them are willing to do it. So uh, cross promote them, talk about them and their Kickstarter and they will talk about you in their update. And it, um, I'll be honest, I have no idea if it worked at all. Uh, most cross promotions probably didn't. Of course, I have a lot of connections with iArcade, as I mentioned a few weeks ago, all my games will be on this device. And they were still in their Kickstarter and they actually uh, did a lot of promotion and also mentioned my game on various things, live streamed on Facebook and in their Kickstarter. So um, I got a few backers from that. And in the last week, I also had a message from uh, the Ayurin Chronicles, which is a big game and they hit their goal within like 24 hours or less. They had 30,000 backers at that time and they wanted to promote my game. And I obviously didn't say no to it. Uh, it brought in a few backers as well. All the other cross promotions is just, um, I think it was all a bit too small and not interesting, but it's still something, uh, it doesn't cost you anything to do it and it can help other Kickstarters and it could help your Kickstarter. So um, cross promotion is something that's uh, just do it. All right, um, the things I learned from this Kickstarter. First off, everybody told me Kickstarter is hard work. It's uh, very hard work. And I said, sure, but I already do all these promotional stuff anyway, so I can handle this. And I can handle it. I'm not completely cuckoo, but it's, um, yeah, it's a lot of work. Trust me, um, I think I underestimated this a little bit. And sure, I do post GIFs and videos all the time for my game, but there are many days that I think I'm just not in the mood for posting something, so I don't. But if you're running a Kickstarter, there is this drive behind it that if I don't post now, I might not get any backers or on certain days there are no backers and then you think, okay, I should post something and just see if I can get at least one backer added to the to this Kickstarter today. So I'm gonna create a GIF, I'm gonna create something awesome in the game, record it, create a GIF, create a video, post it on Twitter, post it on Insta. Oh, we can also do it on Facebook and maybe we can actually retweet an old tweet and maybe we can then post it there and maybe on this Discord channel and before you know it, uh, 30 minutes have passed and you have been just doing other stuff based on the Kickstarter and not working on your game. And then a few hours later, you're gonna check your Kickstarter and you think, I should do another push, maybe another image or screenshot or GIF and everything starts over again. And of course you're tracking all these numbers every day. You're just checking how far your Kickstarter is. It's a drain on the brain. So uh, Kickstarters, um, it's a lot more work than I originally thought it would be. It's draining. Um, so if you can find someone to help you, do it. Because um, as a solo developer doing everything by yourself, it's a lot of work. Um, another key thing to running a successful campaign is a community. Um, you need a community uh, clearly and simply. If you have no followers on Twitter, no Discord channel, no, no nothing on social media, um, that's not gonna work. It's gonna be extremely hard unless you know some key people that do have a lot of outreach and can signal boost for you. But uh, if you have, I think I'm at 4K, 5K followers on Twitter, something like that, and then 8K on Orange Pixel account. Of course, YouTube, 6.2K. It's all um, big compared to many other solo developers, but it's also very small compared to like the really big guys. So um, you need a community. You need to be part of communities. It doesn't have to be your community. Maybe a great Discord with a lot of people in there that are, and you're very regular and you can post there, uh, but you need a community before you start a Kickstarter. 
Yeah, yeah, I would. I think uh, Kickstarter is a great way for smaller development teams or solo game developers like me to um, get funding, to get to make sure that your game, the one you're working on, is actually going to make some money and has interest out there and people want it and are willing to pay for it. It's, it's just a great way to fund it, but make sure you already have something to show. Then I think a Kickstarter is, I would do it again. Let's say I'm going to do a new gun slugs and I think I'm going to do a new gun slug uh, based on the original gun slugs. It would be a very tiny project, uh, easy to make. I would do a Kickstarter for maybe four or 5K. I think that it would allow me to work on the game for two, three months, at which point I probably already spent two, three months on it. And then it's a six month project. I think I would do a Kickstarter again. And if it doesn't meet its goal, uh, that's not really a problem. Then I know, all right, this game might not be really interesting at this time. And uh, I'm gonna do something else and not waste my time on a project that obviously isn't generating enough interest. So Kickstarter is a great way to uh, marketing your game because it does get out there uh, to do research, see if there's enough interest in your game. And of course, uh, get funded for the final stretch of working on your game. So uh, yeah, I would do Kickstarter again. Right, um, and that's it for this week's video. If you have any other questions, let me know in the comments below and make sure you subscribe to the channel because I do these videos regularly or every now and then. And uh, of course, a lot of uh, devlogs for my games and soon I will be talking about some Switch related stuff again. So um, see you next week. Bye.